Welcome back guys. Now after seeing GFR and its auto regulation, let's discuss about the first part of nephron that is proximal convoluted tubule. Right after the Bowman's capsule, we are having this proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Now this part, this part, see actually this is Bowman's capsule. Okay. This crescentic shape thing is the Bowman's capsule in a simplistic way I am showing you. Now the first part of nephron is the proximal convoluted tubule. Now what are the important points about the proximal convoluted tubule? Let's see. Now this is having a brush border. So which part of nephron is having brush border? The epithelium which is having the brush border. For example, if I have to show you. Now these epithelial cells, now they are having brush border towards the lumen. Okay, which helps in increasing the surface area. So if there is more surface area means more easily substances can be reabsorbed. So direct MCQ, which part of the nephron is having brush border? It's a proximal convoluted tubule. And also remember, now proximal convoluted tubule is the one part where maximum reabsorption of water happens. Maximum reabsorption of sodium, maximum reabsorption of chlorine and 100 out of 100% reabsorption of glucose and amino acids will happen in the proximal convoluted tubule. So simply we can say, logically we can say, proximal convoluted tubule is the one which is highly metabolically active. So which part of the nephron or which segment of the nephron is highly metabolically active? If someone asks you, it is a PCT. Now if it is highly metabolically active, definitely this is the part where it should have maximum number of mitochondria. So maximum number of mitochondria are present in proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Now, please concentrate. PCT is having brush border, highly metabolically active, high number of mitochondria maximum reabsorption capacity is there for PCT and also as it is highly metabolically active it demands more oxygen and more blood for example if there is a condition where there is ischemia now which region is going to be more susceptible definitely proximal convoluted tubule why because it demands more blood so in ischemic conditions which part of nephron is going to be mainly affected it is PCT so highly susceptible to hypoxia. PCT is highly susceptible to hypoxia. Now let's see what are the substances which are mainly absorbed in the PCT. 100 out of 100 percent glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed in the PCT. Yes, very important. 100 out of 100 percent, not even one molecule of glucose will be going to the descending limb of loop of Henle or ascending limb of loop of Henle DCD. No, more, all the glucose, not even most, all the glucose will be reabsorbed in the PCT. All the amino acids will be reabsorbed in the PCT. 70% of the sodium and 70% of the chlorine will be absorbed in the PCT. Now, if 70% of the sodium is going back, reabsorbing back, water follows the sodium. We know that thing. So, if 70% of the sodium is going back, along with that, 70% of the water will be reabsorbed. Please note this. The main solute is the sodium. If 70% of solute reabsorption is happening in the PCT means at the same time 70% of solvents even this uh, uh, even this water is also getting reabsorbed. So same amount of solutes same amount of water are being reabsorbed in the PCT. Okay. Now 70% of the urea and potassium are also reabsorbed and 70% of the calcium everything is almost 70. 70% of the calcium is also reabsorbed and 80% of potassium sorry 80% of phosphates and bicarbonates are also reabsorbed in the PCT. Now from this slide what I want to put into your mind is that most of the substances are reabsorbed in the PCT. For every substance maximum reabsorption is happening in the PCT. Okay. So know this point. After seeing this, let's talk a few important concepts. Guys, here this is the glomerular capillaries. These are the glomerular capillaries. Now filtration GFR is happening in this area. You know this. Now glucose is getting filtered, amino acids are getting filtered, water, sodium, chlorine, bicarbonates all are getting filtered but not the blood cells, RBC, WBC, platelets, clotting factors, component proteins, they are not getting filtered. Okay, we know this. Now 70% of the sodium chloride is getting reabsorbed, main solute. And 70% of the water is getting reabsorbed. Now tell me, at the end point of the PCT, in this region, at the end point, will there be any change in the osmolarity? No. For example, let's take something like this. If only solutes are getting reabsorbed, because if all these impurities, take solutes as impurities, if, if you take out all these solutes, and if there is only pure water, what happens? Then the osmolarity, you can say, okay, the osmolarity is getting decreased. The water is becoming hypotonic. Now, what exactly is happening in the PCT? 
at a same type solutes same concentration of solutes and same concentration of water is getting reabsorbed so at the end of the pct the fluid will be having same osmolarity when compared to plasma usually here in the plasma here in the plasma what is the normal osmolarity somewhere around 300 milliosmoles if osmolarity in the plasma is 300 milliosmoles even at the end point of the pct the osmolarity will be same okay so i can say isotonic the fluid in the pct or at the end point of pct is isotonic to the plasma okay urinary ultrafiltrate in the pct okay whatever the fluid is there in the pct it is having isotonic nature to the plasma that is 300 milli osmoles now after saying this let's talk about few important points see 70 percent of the water the maximum water reabsorption is happening where in the pct now i am asking you one question is this water reabsorption in the pct is because of any hormone definitely not okay the water reabsorption in the pct is not because of any hormone so it's the duty of the pct to reabsorb the water okay so it is obligatory water reabsorption where exactly obligatory water reabsorption is happening obligatory water reabsorption is happening at the level of pct why we are calling it as obligatory why not facultate you why because obligatory means in obligatory water reabsorption there is no need of any hormones okay now later we will be discussing facultative water reabsorption is something happening at the level of collecting tubules what happens there usually collecting tubules no they they are not water permeable normally but only under the conditions where there is antidiuretic hormone then only these tubules will reabsorb the water so collecting tubules are permeable to water only under the influence of antidiuretic hormone so that is facultative water reabsorption but when i am talking about the pct in pct there is no need of any hormones hormones are not needed for the water reabsorption so we can call the water reabsorption as obligatory water reabsorption okay now after this let's talk a few important points about how glucose and amino acids are getting reabsorbed i have said you 100 percent of amino acids and 100 percent of glucose are reabsorbed in the pct but for the reabsorption of amino acids and glucose, sodium is needed. In the PCT, amino acids are going to be co-transported along with the sodium. Glucose is co-transported along with the sodium. So, sodium glucose co-transporter, sodium amino acid co-transporter. Such a type of transport is an example of passive transport or active transport. Definitely active transport. But which type of active transport? Secondary active transport okay so all co-transporter remember for your entire life all co-transporters are example of secondary active transport okay atp is not getting directly uh, like you no know, involved atp is indirectly used in this process okay so along with sodium amino acids are getting reabsorbed now let's talk a little clinical correlation what is that see this transporter is sodium glucose co-transporter that is sodium s g for glucose gl means glucose transporter type 2 so sodium glucose type 2 transporter is present where it is present in the pct of the nephron it's helping in the reabsorption of glucose along with sodium secondary active transport we know it now for example if the patient is suffering with the diabetes mellitus we know in the condition of diabetes mellitus there is hyperglycemia so much amount of glucose is there in the blood so what we need to do as a doctor we need to decrease the amount of glucose so how we can do that see if you can inhibit one way one way of inhibiting is uh, if you can inhibit one way of doing that is if you inhibit if you inhibit this transporter what happens if you inhibit this transporter glucose is not going to be reabsorbed glucose is going to be lost in the urine so you can decrease some amount of plasma glucose levels so what are the examples of drugs which are going to block the sglt type 2 transporter so the drugs are gliflozins canagliflozin dapagliflozin empagliflozin these gliflozin group of drugs are inhibitors of sodium glucose type 2 transporter all the glucose is going to be lost in the urine that is the glucose urea is going to be seen and the most common side effect of these drugs is urinary tract infections okay as lot of glucose is lost in the urine now upon this glucose microorganisms can grow and lead to urinary tract infections so direct mcq is most common side effect of this gliflozin drugs is 
urinary tract infections. Now let's talk some important points about renal threshold for glucose. What exactly is renal threshold for glucose? Now let me ask you one question. What is normal random blood sugar levels? Usually right now. What is the normal random blood sugar levels? Random blood sugar levels are somewhere around normally 100 mg per dl. Okay. Now at this normal levels, will any glucose be appearing in the urine? Will any glucose appear in the urine? No. 100 out of 100% of the glucose will be reabsorbed in the PCT. No doubt. But if you increase the glucose more than 200 mg per dl, if you are increasing glucose double the amount almost, then what will happen? Now for the first time, little bit of glucose is going to leak in the urine. Okay, little bit of glucose urea can be seen. So this is known as the renal threshold for glucose. What does we mean by if plasma glucose concentration, if you are increasing it more than 200 mg per, mg per dl, now for the first time, what's happening? Glucose will start to appear. Okay, glucose will start to appear in the urine. So direct MCQ, what is the renal threshold for glucose? 200 mg per dl. Now, Let's talk something called as filtered load. To understand the concept of filtered load, let's take an example. If plasma glucose, guys, what is the normal GFR? Just tell me. The normal GFR is 125 ml per minute. So 125 ml of fluid is getting filtered in both the kidneys. Okay, that's a normal GFR. Now keeping that in mind, if plasma glucose is 100 mg per dl, okay, normal value, right? Normally in you and me, Right now, random blood sugar levels, plasma glucose is 100 mg per dl. Okay. Now, if it is 100 mg per dl, we can say that in 1 ml, in 1 ml, how much glucose is present? In 1 ml, 1 milligram of glucose is present. Now, keeping that in mind, how much glucose is getting filtered is how much fluid is getting filtered. If 125 ml is filtering, in 1 ml, 1 milligram is there. In 125 ml, 125 milligrams of glucose is there. So what is the normal filtered load of glucose? The normal filtered load of glucose is 125 mg per minute. 125 mg per minute. This is something normal. Now keeping that in mind, let's talk about filtered load of a glucose or the transport maximum. We know that filtered load of glucose. The normal filtered load of glucose is 125 milligrams of glucose is getting filtered every minute in the kidneys. Now, if you increase that filter load to, normally it's 125, if you increase that filter load to 375 mg per minute, what's happened sir? If it is normal 125 ml per minute, sorry, not 125 mg per minute, okay, this all 125 milligrams of glucose will be 100% reabsorbed in the PCT, there is no doubt. But there was this one person who is having diabetes mellitus. So much hyperglycemia is there. If so much hyperglycemia is there, what happens? Filter load will be definitely increased. It won't be 125 mg per minute. If you increase the filter load by more than 375 milligrams per minute, what will happen? Now, above this, no extra glucose will be reabsorbed. Okay, up to 375 now even kidneys try to reabsorb, okay, even kidneys try to, some transporters in the kidneys, they will try to reabsorb, but at 375 mg per minute, at this much concentration of the filtered load of glucose, all the transporters in the nephrons are saturated, all the SGLT2 transporters are saturated. Now above this level, no glucose will be reabsorbed. Remember guys, for the first time, when glucose is going to appear in the urine, when you increase the plasma glucose concentration more than 200 mg per dl, then glucose is going to appear in the urine. That's a total different thing. Now, right, I am talking about the transport maximum. What exactly is transport maximum? Transport maximum says that if the filtered load of glucose is more than 300 mg per minute means no extra glucose will be reabsorbed all the extra glucose will be got lost in the urine. This is the transport maximum. Okay. So the Tmax value is 375 mg per minute. That's for the glucose. Now, I have already said you, sodium will be reabsorbed along with the glucose and sodium is also going to be reabsorbed along with the amino acid. So example of secondary active transport.
and all co-transporters are example of secondary active transport. Now we have completed important topic of PCT. Now let's go with the descending limb of loop of Henle, hairpin turn and ascending limb of loop of Henle.